Over the years, I've gotten a ton of questions from people asking me if I would ever recommend a 5.56 build that is super short. And typically, if somebody wanted to build a rifle or a pistol that was less than 11.5 inches, I would typically steer them over to a 300 blackout platform just simply due to the ballistics that you can get out of a short 300 blackout. With that being said, and knowing that we are in the current global ammunition crisis that we're in, I have actually kind of gotten a little bit addicted to short 5.56 platforms, and this particular 10.3 inch build is what sealed the deal. Guys, let's dive into this video and talk about my 10.3 inch 5.56. So before we dive into this video and I run through this pistol build in depth, I wanted to go over a couple disclosures and just be fully transparent with you guys and get you up to speed with parts on this build that were given to me. The reason I think that that is important is having products sent to you can sway your opinion. Now I'm very careful about who I align with and when somebody does send me components, I make sure that I have the freedom to say what I need to say about the parts. I have no interest or intention of getting into any kind of a business relationship with someone who is going to dictate the things that I say or try to pay me or sway me in a way that makes me want to say good things about a bad product. So with that being said, I'm always fully transparent with you guys and I want to let you know that even if somebody sends a component or a part or a piece for a build that is free, I'm not interested in lying to you guys or telling you that it's good if it is not. So let's dive into the parts that were sent to me and what I purchased on my own. So first, the parts that I purchased on my own, this Enforce WML, that's something I bought years back. Silencer Co. ASR Flash Hider, that was purchased by myself. Picatinny Rail Section, same there. Error Precision Lower Receiver, Lower Parts Kit, Grip, Magazine, Buffer Tube, SBA3, and the sling, its attachments, and the Neomag sentry strap, those were all purchased by me. Cerakote was purchased by myself and I applied it myself as well in my shop. As far as components that were sent to me, this Geisley 10.3 inch upper receiver was actually a product trade between Geisley and my company. So the way you would look at that is that's a discount for me. My products still cost me something to produce and so that is just like getting a good discount on something when it's on sale. Same thing with the charging handle and the Law Tactical folding stock adapter. Those were a product trade. Now the Superlative Arms Piston Kit was sent out to me for free. No strings attached. I didn't sign anything and there's no payment there. There's no requirement for me to say anything about it. They simply told me to get it into my content. The same goes for the Vortex UH1 Gen 2 and the Micro 3X magnifier. They were kind enough to send that out to me to get into some of my reviews. So I'm super excited about that. They're good friends of mine, good people over there at Vortex. 
and I'm happy to include these optics in this particular overview slash review of this build. Really the last component that's gonna show up in this video that was sent to me free of charge is the Boscabel Belloc bipod. They did send this bipod to me and in trade I did do some commercial content. I shot some videos for them and I also did a product review of this bipod. If you're interested in that, there's gonna be a card up here over top of my head that's going to take you right over to that review. So guys, with all that being said, I think that's enough about the disclosures. Let's dive into the overview and the specs of this particular build. This pistol build starts off with a Geisley 10.3 inch upper receiver that features an M-lock rail that interlocks into the upper receiver as well as a one in seven twist barrel. On the end of my barrel is a Silencer Co. ASR flash hider to quickly adapt my suppressor and thread that on and off with ease. On top of the rail is an Inforce WML light that features white light as well as infrared. On the barrel, I have the superlative arms piston kit that is fully adjustable, vents all the excess gas forward and allows me to switch between suppressed and unsuppressed with ease. As far as the finish on the upper receiver, as you can tell, it is a flat dark earth Cerakote finish. On the upper receiver, I have a Vortex UH-1 Gen 2 holographic sight and behind that I have the Vortex Micro 3X magnifier. The bolt carrier group on this particular build is the Superlative Arms bolt carrier group and it features their special coating, which makes it super easy for you to clean and maintain. As far as the lower receiver, is concerned it is an error precision lower receiver that features a standard parts kit standard bolt catch and safety and an SDE trigger from Geisley on the receiver I have a law tactical FDE folding stock adapter and adapted to that I have an SBA3 brace with the Wiseman company split fix on the back to keep the brace in its position I have a Magpul grip that I Cerakoted FDE Inside the gun, I am running a standard buffer and a standard spring. Again, with that superlative arms piston kit, I'm able to do all of my adjustments up front, and that allows me to fine tune this rifle no matter what ammo or configuration I am running. The gas system on this particular build is a carbine length gas system as well. As far as the sling, I am currently running a Blue Force gear sling, and holding that sling in place is a sentry strap from Neomag. The sling connects to the rail via a QD sling swivel, and on the brace, there is also a QD sling swivel as well. So overall, you can probably tell from this build, just seeing how I built it out, that I wanted an extremely capable, extremely potent, very tiny and compact 5.56 platform. And all of the parts that I listed here that I included in this build helped me to achieve just that. What I wanted to explore was a super short 5.56 platform that I could pack in a backpack, take it with me anywhere, hike into the woods, go shooting on the range, run it suppressed, shoot 200 yards and closer, and even further because this actually proves to be an extremely accurate gun. And so all of the parts that I have on this build are specifically tailored to that task, a do-all 5.56 pistol build. As I stated, I have an ASR flash hider on the end of my barrel, and that is pretty much my standard go-to. I'm not a big fan of brakes, and I like to run the ASR flash hider because it allows me to attach my Omega 30 cal can very easily, very quickly, without struggling at all. On top of the rail, I have my Inforce WML, and this is like the OG Inforce WML. It's only around 400 lumens, but it does also have infrared. If I'm hiking around out in the woods, and I'm using my night vision. I like to actually put this on my helmet and I will run this with infrared and then I can use it to scan for eyes or of predators, foxes, coyotes, things like that. The upper receiver, as I stated, I did the Cerakote myself and I wanted to go with a cool color, something that looked good in photos. Typically I would not go with an FDE, but on this build I wanted to do FDE. I just thought it would pop. So that's what I chose to do. Normally if I was hunting or trying to disappear in the woods, I would kind of stay away from tans because that doesn't really exist much in the Pennsylvania wilderness, but I digress. I think it's super important for any build to have a good quality sling. I don't think you have to overthink it, but the reasoning behind having a sling is it allows you to stow the rifle on your body. If you need to use your hands and keep the gun really tight up against you, you can do that. And so I always run a two point sling and in this particular build, a Blue Force gear sling is what I'm running. There's a ton of other slings out there. Definitely not saying Blue Force gear is the only way to go. And in fact, I would probably argue there's a lot better options on the market, but for what I'm doing right now and for what I already have, 
I have a ton of these Blue Force gear slings, and so they always end up getting incorporated into my different builds. But pretty much I've defaulted on adding a sentry strap onto every single build because I like to have my sling stowed, and it makes it super easy to just pull the sling anytime I need it. It will allow the magnet to pop off on the strap, and then I have full access to my sling. As far as the optics on this, my reasoning behind the UH-1 was I wanted to do something a little bit different than what I've done in the past. Years ago, I had a bunch of ear tags and I didn't like them. I have an astigmatism in my eye, so fuzzy optic plus that equals a mess. I was actually pleasantly surprised with the UH-1 and I did find that it works extremely well. The UH-1 Gen 2 is also pretty cool because it does have some night vision settings. So if you're running a PVS-14 on a helmet like I have, it is actually very usable. You can aim right through the sight with your PVS-14 and do some passive aiming. And the benefit of that is if there's ever a situation, which is again, highly unlikely that us as citizens will be in, but if you are defending your property valiantly in your night vision and your enemy has night vision as well, if you're pointing an infrared laser downrange or illuminating with an infrared illuminator, they can see that as well. So you, aiming passively allows you to just use the optic without actually projecting anything onto your target. The UH-1 Gen 2 does have the ability to do all of that. Now the optic is pretty unique and I did try to get it on my camera. It has a little triangle at the bottom and a center dot as well as a big crosshair circle. To be honest, I just use the center dot. I know that you can use the triangle at the bottom for holdovers at closer distances. So if you zero it at say 50 yards, but you're shooting on paper and trying to get precise hits at say seven to 10 yards, using that triangle on the bottom will give you your proper height offset to land those shots where you need to. Now for me, with my training, I just actually aim high. So I just know that at seven to 10 yards, I put the dot about two inches above what I'm trying to hit and I'm gonna land my shots, simple. It all depends on your training and your skill set, but that feature is also included in this particular optic. It does run on a CR123. It's auto shut off after so many hours, and I've just found that this has a ton of battery life. I have replaced the batteries at least once, so it's not as good battery life as some other smaller micro dots, but it is very good. The 3X magnifier just tops it off the charts, man. This is just such an awesome addition to any gun, especially one that you don't want a committed LPVO on. I didn't want the bulk or the extra length or the extra space being taken up of an LPVO. So I ended up running this micro magnifier and let me tell you, it works wonders. When you couple the 3X magnifier with the Vortex UH-1 and my bipod along with that superlative arms, piston conversion and my suppressor and you have an insanely flat shooting gun. Check this out. So as you could see from that particular video, landing three round strings at about 120 yards on a small target is extremely easy with the magnifier UH-1 Gen 2, piston kit and suppressor on a good bipod. The superlative arms piston kit is amazing. I cannot tell you enough how awesome that kit is. So the cool part about the piston kit is the fact that you can adjust it in a way that it vents the excess gas forward. So essentially on the front of the block for the piston, you can adjust it in a way that it restricts gas flow, but if you keep opening it up more and more and more, there's a bypass valve. And it seems kind of counterintuitive, definitely look at the instructions, and, and this is kind of why I plan to eventually just dive fully into a review of this product. But if you keep going past the point where you are opening up the gas port more and overgassing it, you get to the bypass stage where it actually vents that gas forward. And what I found I had to do with the superlative arms piston kit is essentially kind of undergas it a little bit without the suppressor, and then it's just a little bit overgassed when I run it suppressed. So I kind of found that happy medium to where I can be on the range shooting videos and just slap the suppressor on, do my shoot, my drills, whatever I want to do, let the suppressor cool, take it off, and just run the gun. And so that's why in this video, if you notice when I'm suppressed, it seems a little bit overgassed. Rest assured, the superlative arms kit has the ability to dial in that suppressor 
I choose to find a happy medium between being a little bit undergassed on the unsuppressed side and a little bit overgassed on the suppressed end. The rail on the Geisley upper does have a unique way that it locks on. Pretty legit locking mechanism on the bottom to the barrel nut, and then it does lock in really well into the upper receiver, so you could put a laser aiming device or whatever you want on it without fear of losing your zero. I opted to go with the Geisley SDE trigger on this one, and the SDE trigger is my second favorite trigger from Geisley, at least at this point. I'm always going back and forth between the triggers and I can never fully come up with my favorite, but the SDE is a phenomenal trigger. It is a little bit lighter than the Super Dynamic Combat, but it's still not this crazy hair trigger, but it does have an awesome reset, very smooth take up, very clear wall, and slamming shots downrange quickly with quick follow up, super easy. I do like running the Magpul grips. I don't even remember what model this is. I typically prefer the ones without the little nub, but overall, I'm pretty happy with that grip as well. The charging handle from Geisley is awesome because I do wear gloves in winter. I'm out on the range in all kinds of inclement weather, so you never know what you're gonna be working with, so that comes in extremely handy. The Law Tactical folder is pretty much the celebrity of the show that doesn't need its introduction at all. Pretty much if you know anything about AR-15s, you probably recognize the Law Tactical folding adapter. This allows your AR-15 to fold, which is going to allow you to put it in a bag of whatever kind that fits it. Or even if you don't use a bag, it's just super handy to not have the buffer tube, stock, and brace adding this extra foot to your overall build. When I'm taking this pistol back and forth to work or to the range, I typically throw it in my Vertex Gamut 2.0 bag. And a 10.3 inch barrel with the ASR flash hider is pretty much all you're gonna get out of that particular bag. It does fit extremely snug, but it does work with a 30 round magazine and there is space to spare. So it is the perfect bag, in my opinion, for this build. I went with the SBA3 brace because it's a little bit less expensive, at least when I bought it, versus the SBA4. And I really actually like the fact that there's no bulk under here on the SBA3. I think it's a little bit more of a simplistic brace. The one thing I'm gonna say about the SBA3 is the ears on the bottom, the rubber, tend to fold over on each other, whether that's in a bag or you're shooting it from your shoulder. So the best solution that I've found for that is the split fix from Wiseman Company. While we're diving into all of these specifications on the build, I did wanna just show you guys real quick, and again, just keep in mind, I'm gonna dive into this particular kit in a future video, but the Superlative Arms kit, I thought it would be awesome to just kinda of show you guys what comes in that kit. So inside of the box here, I have my bolt carrier group. Cool part about this is you no longer need the gas rings in here. You just take those off, stick your bolt in here with the pin, and you're good to go. It's got a special coating on it, so it's super easy to clean. And I'm telling you, you can just wipe it down. It's super awesome. The actual piston looks like this, and here is that adjustable piston. Nice, sleek design. It should fit underneath most standard rails. I definitely would say ask Superlative Arms if you have any questions. It does fit extremely snug underneath my Geisley rail, but it does not touch in any location. So then you have the adjuster screw on the front is the small Allen. And again, the first couple clicks, and I forget how many, so check the instructions. The first half of the range or so is just restricting the gas flow. So you open it up more and more and more, it's gonna allow more gas to flow back through the action. Once you go past a certain point, that's when you start going into that bypass valve and you're gonna actually start venting the gas forward, which is what you want. If you want the lower felt recoil, the smoother operating, cleaner gun, you're gonna want to vent that gas forward. Other than that, there's a little rod here that installs a special bushing in the upper receiver. And then you have two Allen wrenches that you use to disassemble the piston block and also adjust and fine tune it. The one thing I did wanna mention about the superlative arms, and then I'm just gonna wrap up talking about this for now, is you do need to have a barrel that is indented for the gas block. So some barrels are not, they just tighten down on a barrel. There's no indentation for the set screws to recess into. If yours does not have any indents or recesses for the set screws, you may need to add them. I actually had to add those on this Geisley. They weren't positioned quite right. All I did was use my Dremel and just touch the barrel a little bit to make a tiny, tiny little indent, and it was just enough to set these screws into. Overall, it is a very intuitive kit, and once you get it dialed in and you get it set up the way that you want, 
you're going to find that you have a softer felt recoiling gun that runs a ton cleaner. You're gonna to have to clean it less in the action and it's just gonna feel like a more refined gun. And I can tell you that right out of the box, the Geisley upper receiver was gassed very heftily. <laughs> it definitely had plenty of gas pressure. So I'm glad that I ran that superlative arms kit. So overall with this build, what I was going for was that do-all rifle that was compact, not a micro build, but not a 14.5 or 12.5, 5.56. I wanted something that I could slap my bipod on, shoot distances like 200, 250 yards, slam targets, be accurate, be agile, be very quick to point and maneuver. And this gun just does all of that, whether I am doing transition drills or reloads or ready up drills. This gun just has a natural point to it. It feels amazing in your hands. And with all of the accessories and components that I put onto it, it is truly one of my most refined builds that I've done to date. I know that somebody's going to ask, so the price tag of this would be extremely expensive. So just keep that in mind. I would not say that this is your entry level AR-15. I would venture to guess that you would have about $3,500 into this particular build. And I do plan to get on tatargets.com on our website and write a blog post completely outlining all of the parts with links for this particular build. So if you have interest in learning exactly what went into this gun, I will put that up as soon as possible. So keep your eyes open there. And once it's up, I can put a link over to that page here in the description. As far as things that I will change on it, I really don't think I'm gonna to change too much other than the flashlight. I would like to update the flashlight and get rid of the OG WML. I've been eyeing up mod light, been checking out cloud defense. I'm not sure which route I'm gonna go quite yet. I also would love to get a mall so I can get IR laser, IR light, and really start messing around with my night vision and playing with this particular build. So we'll see what I do. And if I update this thing in any kind of drastic way, I will do an update video on that as well. But I feel like I checked off all my boxes with this build. I'm extremely happy with it. I've got thousands upon thousands of rounds through this thing since the day that I built the DI 10.3 up until this point to where I have this finished product that I feel like I could tackle any mission in front of me, defend my house, put food on the table, and just have an all around awesome gun for training, making content for my company, and just enjoying the freedoms that we have in the United States. So guys, I would love to hear what you think about this particular build. If you have any experiences with the components that I have on this build, the optics, superlative arms, piston kit, Geisley, anything else on this build, definitely put that information down in the comments below. It's a great place for you to give your feedback, ask me questions, and I do try to engage with all of those comments as well. Hopefully you found this video enjoyable and I hope it helps you along in your journey of becoming a better protector. Guys, if you like my channel, you like the content that I'm putting out, please consider subscribing. And as I've said in every single video, the best way you can support me is to consider jumping on tatargets.com and purchasing a steel target. That helps me because you're supporting the business and the team, and then it helps you because you're gonna have the assets you need to become better trained and better prepared to protect yourself, your community, and your family. We're in crazy times right now, so I hope that the videos that I put out help you out in some way. Guys, I appreciate you for tuning in. Stay well, stay safe. I'll see you in the next video.